Hello my sax playing friend, welcome back to the saxophone embellishments challenge. This is day two. My name's Alexander Mathias from saxophonemasterclass.com and in this challenge I'm showing you the step-by-step -step process for taking your songs from sounding boring and simple and lifeless to sounding more pro, giving it more character, giving it more expression, more emotion, more life. So you can start sounding like the sax players on your favorite recording. So yesterday I gave you the seven pro embellishment techniques, which are grace notes, bends, turns, trills, glissandos, falls, and growling. And I gave you an overview of what all those techniques mean. I even gave you a PDF that you can download with a description of those techniques so you can start working on them offline. And I demonstrated each of those techniques for you as well. So if you missed day one, go ahead and check it out. There's a link below this video. And let me know which embellishment you love the most and which one you really want to learn the most. Today is day two of the saxophone embellishments challenge and I'm going to be sharing with you my five step process for memorizing any song on the saxophone. This also applies to learning horn lines on the sax or even sax solos that you're trying to learn as well. I learned this technique at Berklee College of Music in Boston where I got my music degree and I've been using it across my 15 year career playing the saxophone. It's given me the ability to learn songs and solos and horn lines faster than ever so that I can go on stage and play the music without any sheet music in front of me, which was essential for me when I was performing around the world touring with platinum selling artists. It was so important for me to be able to play in front of 20,000 people without having to put my face into the sheet music. I was able to get into the music, get out into the front of the stage and really put on a show, really entertain the audience because I'd already internalized the music. So memorizing songs is really the first step to transforming your saxophone playing. If you want to start sounding like the pros on your favorite recordings and embellishing your songs like the pros on your favorite recordings, you have to memorize a song first. This is the foundation for transforming transformation in your saxophone songs from boring, from simple, from amateur to pro, to full of life, full of character and full of emotion. When you internalize a song, you can take it to that next level and add in these different characteristics. So you can really sound confident and really focus on the musicality of the song, really focus on putting yourself into the song. So memorizing the song is really the first step you need to take before you start trying to add on these different embellishment techniques. Otherwise you start getting lost, you start losing your place, you start forgetting the melody and when you're playing with a band or even a backing track and you lose your place or you lose the rhythm, the whole thing can fall apart very quickly. So it's really important to memorize a song, be able to play the song straight, which means you're not putting any embellishments on, you're not adding any other notes, you're just playing the melody as it's written and you should be able to play that melody along to a backing track in time and with good rhythm before you start embellishing it with all these different pro techniques. So that's why it's so important to learn this five step pro process for memorizing songs. So you can internalize them and then have the ability to embellish them. So before I show you this five step process, go ahead and download the free PDF that goes along with this lesson. It's gonna really help with following along. I wrote out the five step process for you so you can work on this technique offline. And I also gave you the note names, the fingerings and the sheet music for Happy Birthday, which is the song I'm gonna be using to show you you this memorization technique. So go ahead and download that now. There's a link below this video. So step one for memorizing any song on a saxophone is to simply warm up the saxophone. This is something people skip over all the time. They don't practice any warm-up techniques before they actually start practicing the song they're trying to learn. So there's a lot of different ways to warm up. You can use just the mouthpiece and neck by itself to warm up your embouchure, which is a great warm up technique. So simply take your mouthpiece and neck and just form your embouchure, take deep breaths, work on your diaphragmatic breathing and just warm up your embouchure playing with the mouthpiece and neck like this. So 
So try and play a long tone for maybe eight to 10 seconds and do this five to 10 times just to warm up your embouchure, just to practice your diaphragmatic breathing so you can feel like you're warmed up and ready to play with the rest of the saxophone. So now I'm gonna grab the rest of the sax and I'm gonna show you some more warm up techniques with the rest of the saxophone. So step one, when you're thinking about warming up for a song, is to actually figure out what the scale of the song is. So for example, Happy Birthday uses a scale of C major. So what we wanna do is actually start warming up with the C major scale. And the notes of C major are C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. There's seven notes in C major. Now I've given you all the fingerings for the C major scale in both octaves of the saxophone in the PDF guide. And again, you can download that. There's a link below this video. And what you wanna do is actually start warming up with that scale. And the best way to do this is to simply practice long tones. So we're gonna practice long tones starting on the middle C. So this is middle C, and we're just gonna do a long tone for eight to 10 seconds. And then we just keep going down the scale. So we're gonna to go to B. Go to A. And then finally G. So that's just an example of doing long tones on the C major scale. I start on the middle C and I go down each note of the scale. Now you can go all the way down to the low C, but even if you just get to the G or the F on the saxophone, this is a great place to start warming up. That's because the song Happy Birthday doesn't actually go any lower than the G without the octave key. So even if you just get as far as the G without the octave key, you'll be perfectly warmed up and ready to play Happy Birthday. Now you may have noticed that I tongue the beginning of the note and this is great, especially if you're a beginner because this helps you get the note out easier. If you're more advanced, you can try doing long tones without tonguing the note, but it's gonna be a little harder to get it consistent and get it out right away. So we started going down the instrument and playing long tones down to the low G, but now we wanna start going up the instrument as well. So we're gonna do more long tones, but this time we're gonna go from D with the octave key up to G with the octave key. So we're doing a long tone on D, which is three fingers in the left hand, three fingers in the right, and the octave key. Now we're going up to E. Go up to F. And then finally, G with the octave key. Again, we can go even higher than this all the way up to the high C, but this is more than enough to warm up for happy birthday because this is the range of the song. The song only goes from the low G without the octave key up to the high G with the octave key. You don't go any higher and you don't go any lower. So you can just warm up within the range of the song. And so this is a really important thing to note. If you're trying to learn a song, figure out what the lowest note of the song is and the highest note of the song is so you can warm up within that range. You also may have noticed I'm not putting any vibrato on any of the long tones, and this is really important too. You don't wanna start doing vibrato, you don't wanna start bending the notes, you don't wanna do any embellishment techniques at this point. Just play long tones with great breath support and a firm embouchure. 
And this is really going to help prepare you for learning and memorizing this song. So that is step one of the five step process for memorizing any song on a saxophone. You have to warm up first or the rest of the steps are just going to be a struggle. You're not going to be able to get out the notes consistently. You're not going to feel good when you're playing because you're not properly warmed up and you're going to keep making mistakes. So now that we're warmed up, we're going to move on to step two. And this is to simply break the song down into multiple phrases. So happy birthday has four different phrases. And what we want to do is focus in on one phrase at a time. So we're not learning all these different notes. We're just learning a few notes from one phrase of the song. So for example, the first phrase of happy birthday is only six notes. So it's a lot easier to learn six notes than to learn 20 notes. So just breaking it down into phrases makes the process of memorizing and learning the song a lot easier. Now in the PDF download that you can get below this video, I show you the different phrases of happy birthday so you can see exactly what notes are in each phrase. But let me just show you what phrase one of happy birthday sounds like. So that's phrase one, it's just six notes, G, G, A, G, C, B. So this is a lot easier to start learning and memorizing as opposed to trying to learn and memorize the entire song. So at this point, what you wanna do is practice phrase one and try to play it three times in a row. This is what I call the rule of three. You wanna play it three times in a row, but you don't wanna make any mistakes. So if you play it once and you get it perfect, great. If you play it a second time, you get it perfect, amazing. If you play it a third time and you make a mistake, well now you have to go back and start again and try to get it three times perfectly in a row. This is the rule of three. This is something I learned years ago. And this is what really helps you internalize the song and internalize the melody. You start to get it into the muscle memory of your fingers and it makes it really difficult to forget. Now at this point, you can still read the sheet music, you can still have the fingerings in front of you, but just try to practice that phrase one three times in a row without making a mistake. So after you practice it multiple times, try to get it three times in a row and it should sound something like this. So I played it three times in a row. I didn't make any mistakes. Now I still have the sheet music in front of me. I still have the fingerings in front of me. I still have that guide to help me with learning the song, but I'm able to play it three times in a row without making a mistake. And remember, if you do make a mistake, that's it. You've broken the rule of three. You've got to go back to the start and do it three times in a row again. This is the only way to really help you internalize the melody because nobody wants to keep playing the same thing over and over and over and over again. So this is a way of really making you memorize it so you don't have to go back and do the rule of three again and again. It helps you to focus in and try to get it perfect three times in a row. So of course, no one's there to tell you to do it again and again. You have to put this rule on yourself when you're practicing each phrase and you're trying to play it three times in a row. If you make a mistake, you have to be honest with yourself and say, you know, I didn't get it quite perfect there. I have to start again and let me do it three times in a row perfectly before you move on to step three. And step three is now turning over the sheet music, turning over the fingering so you're not looking at anything. You have to do it from memory. But at this point, you've already practiced it so many times. You've played it three times in a row perfectly without making a mistake. So it's gonna be a lot easier to do it by memory. But again, we're only focusing on phrase one. And this time, we're gonna play it three times in a row without the sheet music and the fingerings. So this is the third step of my five step process. You have to start to learn this without the sheet music and fingerings, but only focus in on one phrase at a time, starting with phrase one. So you just play phrase one again, 
three times in a row. Again, if you make a mistake the third time, the second time, you have to go back and you have to get it three times in a row. Now, if you really can't get it three times in a row, without the sheet music, you can go back to step two and look at the fingerings, look at the note names, and you can do the whole process again so you can really try to internalize it. But if you've done step two correctly, you should be able to memorize it without the fingerings and without the note names or the sheet music in step three. You should have it internalized at this point. It should be in your muscle memory at this point, and it should be a lot easier to play the notes without the sheet music. So that's step three. Work on phrase one without the fingerings, without the note names, without the sheet music, and then move on to step four, which is simply applying the same process of step two and step three to the other phrases of the song. So let's move on now to phrase two, and I'll give you an example of how to go through this process one more time. So phrase two sounds like this. We go G, G, A, G, up to D with the octave key down to middle C. So that's phrase two of happy birthday, and now we just go through the same process. You have the fingerings in front of you, you have the note names in front of you. Now we're just gonna play it three times in a row without making a mistake. So now I've played phrase two using the rule of three where I played it three times in a row without making a mistake. And I have the fingerings in front of me, I have the sheet music or the note names in front of me to guide me. But now that I've played it three times in a row perfectly, I can turn over the fingerings, turn over the sheet music and start to memorize it without that guidance. So again, you go through the process of practicing it, trying to remember the notes, trying to remember the fingerings and try to play it three times in a row perfectly without the sheet music. At this point now, you've memorized phrase one and phrase two, and you just continue this process with phrase three and phrase four. Now, you don't have to try and do this all in one practice session. You can actually just focus in on phrase one of a song, try to make that your goal for that one practice session, try to memorize it, try to even just play it three times in a row with the sheet music and fingerings, and stop there, take a break, maybe wait till the next day to move on to the next part of the process, to move on with memorizing the first phrase, or learning and memorizing the other phrases of the song. Take your time with this process. This isn't a process that you should do all in one practice session. Now, once you've learned and memorized all the different phrases, it's time to bring them all together. And that's what step five is of this five-step memorization process. You need to start combining the different phrases. Now, there's a few different ways to do this. You can go ahead and try to play all phrases in a row from memory, or you can actually start combining the first two phrases of the song and working on those two phrases and then combining the last two phrases of the song, phrases three and four, and work on that together and then combine all of the different phrases. So let me show you what I mean about step five where we're combining all the phrases. We're gonna start combining phrase one and phrase two. So I showed you what those two phrases are. Now we're gonna practice playing them three times in a row, but we're gonna combine both phrases like this. <laughs> So there you have it, I've combined phrase one and phrase two, and now I'm applying the rule of threes 
to those two phrases combined together. I'm trying to play them from memory three times in a row without making a mistake. So again, if you make a mistake on the second time or the third time around, you have to go back and start again and do it three times in a row or this memorization technique will not work. So yes, you need a lot of patience for this approach to memorizing songs, but this is the easiest way to memorize songs quickly. There's no other real technique that's gonna help you memorize songs this fast. Even though it might take a long time to memorize the entire song, it's still gonna be quicker than any other process because you are never going to forget the song if you go through this process. Because you've repeated each phrase so many times, because you're using these techniques to combine the phrases, because you're doing the rule of three, you've pretty much internalized the fingerings, you've pretty much created muscle memory in your fingers to the point where you could do this in your sleep. So if you really wanna memorize a song and never forget it, this is the process you need to do. Now, once you've worked on phrase three and four individually, you can combine three and four as well. Do the same process I just did with phrase one and two. And then finally, combine all the phrases together and play the whole song three times in a row. So we're gonna play happy birthday three times in a row perfectly without making a mistake. And this is the hardest part of memorizing the song. But once you've done this, once you've played the song three times in a row without making a mistake, you have memorized it for the rest of your life. You will never have to sit down and try to figure out the fingerings again because you'll have internalized the song completely and it will be in your muscle memory for years. So I really hope you're able to follow along with this five-step process for memorizing songs. Remember, you can apply this to solos, you can apply this to horn lines as well. This is what I've been doing for over 25 years as a professional musician to help me memorize songs, to help me memorize horn lines, to help me memorize saxophone solos that people want me to play from recordings like Careless Whisper, like Baker Street. I've had to do this process to internalize these melodies and songs and now I never forget them. I can turn up to a gig and I have a repertoire of different songs, different horn lines, different solos that I can play without needing the sheet music, without needing the fingerings, without needing any other guidance to help me. It's all internalized, it's all in my muscle memory. And even if I'm tired, even if I'm sick, maybe I'm nervous for some reason, I can still play the songs because like I said, it's almost like I can do it in my sleep. It's completely internalized and in my muscle memory. So this is now the foundation for adding expression, adding character to the song. You need to know it inside out so you can start applying different embellishment techniques. And that's where day three of the saxophone embellishment challenge comes in. I'm gonna show you how to apply specific embellishments to this song, Happy Birthday. Even if you've been playing a few months or even if you're a beginner, I'm gonna show you some simple embellishment techniques to help you put more life and character into the song. So I'm gonna play for you Happy Birthday with the embellishment techniques I'm gonna show you on day three. And I really hope you can tune in for day three. If it's already out, there's a link below this video. And I'm gonna show you all the different techniques I'm using in this embellished version of Happy Birthday. So here's what it sounds like. So that's the embellished version of Happy Birthday I'm gonna show you step by step on day three of the saxophone embellishments challenge. I use two different techniques. I use grace notes and I use what's called mordance, which is like a mini trill. I explained what that was on day one. And I'm gonna show you the exact notes and the exact fingerings that I used to embellish this song. So make sure to tune in for day three. And this is really an example of what you're gonna get inside my saxophone embellishments simplified course. I actually take you through embellishment techniques step by step. I break it all down for you. I show you all the different fingerings. I show you how you can practice the embellishment techniques slowly. So even if you're a beginner, even if you've only been playing a few months, you can start to follow along with ease. I show you how to apply these different embellishment techniques 
to different sax solos and different songs like Careless Whisper, like Baker Street, like When the Saints Go Marching In. I give you all these different examples so you can start to apply these techniques in real life to real songs. So it's just like I'm going to show you on day three with Happy Birthday. It's all broken down for you step by step. So keep an eye out for the saxophone embellishment simplified offer that's coming on Monday. But in the meantime, review this lesson, download the PDF of my five step memorization process, and then I'll see you on day three where I'm going to show you how to start applying these simple embellishment techniques to Happy Birthday. All right, my friend, let me know what you thought of this five step memorization process. Comment below this video and let me know if you have any questions about this process as well. I'll see you on day three and until then, happy playing. Mm-hmm.